To be in expression in life, you need the support. So, uh, right now, for example, I'm using my vocal cord. I make them vibrate. They create a sound. The sound are made of symbols. And I use English. And then uh, we are kind of in unity, so we can understand each other and uh, we can be in communication. So for the painter, uh, the painter use the canvas, the writer will be the paper, the dancer his own body. So we realize that without a support, we cannot be in expression. So therefore it must be essential. And then I thought, well, when uh, people paint on the canvas, they're gonna use uh, pigment, color, etc., and they're gonna cover with those pigments the canvas so at the end the canvas will be neutralized and uh, will not really notice the canvas actually it's just here to support the pigments so i thought hmm, that's interesting there's kind of a paradox here in one way we realize the support must be essential and then when we paint it become neutral And I thought, uh, what happened, for example, if I reverse the game? If I try to neutralize myself so that the support I paint on will become the subject? Because I thought, you know, it's essential. And I said, well, you know, the canvas uh, is kind of boring, you know, nothing much to do with it. So in order to make the material the subject, I had to give up colors, composition, and to kind of use only white in the sense of transparency with the material. And I started to work like a sculptor who always works in relation to his material. He has to. And here you see um, playing by revealing the wood, by chiseling the wood revealing what's inside the wood. I was more and more working on wood because it was the easiest material to find anywhere and to play with, and it was free. And one day I found an old piece of wood covered with dirt near a house in construction, and I think this wood was going to the garbage, so I, I brought it to the studio, and I took a sponge to clean uh, the dirt, but by cleaning the dirt with the sponge, I actually drew the trunk of a tree. So because I was very much inclined to see the wood as a subject, it's like the, the wood, the plywood was telling me, don't you see, I'm just a tree, nothing else. So from now on, I decided, well, I'm going to paint trees on any manufactured wood. So it changed everything when you start working on the wood. Uh, the wood is already an image by itself. You see knots, you see texture, vein, and 
because I want to bring back the tree, I will start from the nuts, and that that's how I draw the branch. And to create the 3D effect, I use a very simple technique of watercolor. So putting water to create the coloration of the branch on the side, I use a little bit of coffee actually. And to get the darkness on the edge of the branch, a little bit of black acrylic. And of course, I'm still free to use uh, a composition which is from my imagination, but I definitely work in relation work in relation to the the knots. So every knots I see, I will do a branch, and I go along like that. So when uh, you work usually on the canvas, you free and your imagination create everything. Here I had to give up my imagination, part of my imagination, to be working in relation with the quality of the wood. So, and that was my intention at the end, so that you will see the wood and you will feel the wood and you could even touch it. So you really think you're looking at a tree and in some way the plywood is still a tree. So for the background, I use a little bit of black to create a contrast and a variation. But in general, I'm very careful to create an abstraction in the back. Nothing realistic, no sense of space, nothing else. So that you're not distracted from looking at what is essential in this the tree. And the tree, of course, doesn't exist anymore. So that's why I choose to do an abstraction of a composition which is more abstract. Uh, you don't see the full tree, you don't see the leaf, you don't see the roots, you don't see the ground. So it's, it's symbolically uh, bringing back the tree by the illusion and the reality of its materiality in some way. The best part is just you put water and it's when you reveal the most of wood, the beauty of the texture. Look at this, it's magical. I'm just putting water here and the tree is becoming alive again. This is the best moment. And of course, when the water dry, it will disappear. But I'm gonna put on the edge some coffee and black paint to make it, to fix the image.
Well, one is curious. Hi. I said one is curious. The one is curious. That's, I think that's very good to be curious. What, what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? I think you're planting something that looks tree-like on wood, which is kind of interesting. That's, that sounds fair to me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the material, the manufactured material come from okay. nature. Yes. And it was a tree. Yes. So I had the idea that uh, when I paint on something, I should reveal the material and less me. Yeah. So the wood is telling me I'm a tree, so I just paint. Yeah. I tried by any means to bring back the tree. Yeah. Like I have to paint it with my branches. Oh, it's good. I'm using the knots. It's the nice. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. I like the idea. It, it, and you know, I mean, you're here, but you kind of got it what you, what you were meaning. So, yeah. And yeah, the idea to work in the public space. Yeah. Because you're part of the artwork. Absolutely. Well, I don't know. It's a conversation. No, it's a conversation. Yeah. I'm conversing with the wood, but it's also, the point is also that we converse ourselves in regard to nature. What do we do with nature, you know? Yes. How we transform it, how we destroy it. And my idea is to reveal it. Great. I like it. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you very much for your explanation. Hey, I appreciate it. Have a good day. It. Yeah. You too. Bye bye. Bye. French artist uh, Marcel Duchamp used to say it's a viewer who create the painting. So we could consider what is important, you know, after the painting is done. The artist feels very free in the studio, but he's losing his freedom and gaining some support within the gallery system, for example. So the gallery, the wall of the gallery will also support the painting, as well as the ground. But at the end, there's also the viewer by looking at the painting. In my sense, the viewer becomes the essential support of the art, of the image, of the art. So contrary to this lady, we're thinking, oh, I, I don't know if I'm part of uh, this, pain, this work, but yeah, she is by looking at it and interpreting it and getting his, her own experience through what she see. So I just started here and the wood is so old that the first thing to do is to sand it to bring back uh, the quality of the wood, its, it's color, its texture, its warm because here the wood is degrading, getting gray and dark. Action. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
How do you feel? Huh? How do you feel when you do this? I feel uh, climbing the trees. <laughs> I wish I could climb the trees. Okay. It's under the ladder. Okay. <laughs> It's kind of fun to draw by sanding. Mm -hmm. I draw directly by sanding. The wood is so soft I can do it. Yeah. Once I 